Orville Dam update for Saturday, April 15th, 2017. Uh, I presume most folks who are into this or following this now um, have seen the new movie, the sequel, Spillway 3. Uh, it's obviously it's a it's a it's a little two minute clip there they did of the um, reopening the grand reopening of the damaged primary primary spillway at the Oroville Dam in Oroville California, and I don't know what to say anymore. They have changed this plan so much now that it, I think all bets are off in terms of what what the outcome of this is going to be. Um, the the issue there's all sorts of stuff that's behind the scenes of that that's probably lurking that we don't know about there's there are documents allegedly detailing other problems that apparently most people are not privy to uh so with those variables out there hanging over everything who knows so i guess we can only just really base what's going on as best we can on what we can see with our own eyes via uh, footage that they release as they release it um, as we go along so Doing a little bit of guessing and prognosticating about this erosion thing, you can see that they have, um, <laughs> they've really dressed the place up very nicely for the occasion, the event. It looks just lovely. The grounds look just wonderful. And, you know, there's been, uh, they've done all that terracing and all that kind of, that stuff too, which there was some wonderment on from some folks online about why they might be doing that and would that not make the situation worse in terms of erosion? And if you were talking about just a hillside that was just sitting there naturally and was saturated and had the you know, propensity, you know, had a steep enough grade, that would be another story. That's that's where you would want to leave the vegetation, of course. But in the case of this, this uh, I think that the, the issue is not that they're going to have stuff sliding naturally from above because it's soaking wet. That could happen. But the real problem is going to come from that underlaying bedrock or whatever it is. I had one of my commenters refer to the stuff as... Um, Rotten schist, schist, something I don't know if it's the, the German pronunciation of the word shit or if it's, if it's an, the, another term, another uh, pronunciation. But allegedly, miners back when could knock a ha could knock a mountain down in a, in a morning with this stuff. It's it's that quality of rock. And there's there's a couple of videos out there showing a a guy hitting what is you know a, a solid a nice bedrock, and it has wonderful ring. And then you're hitting this stuff, this so-called rotten schist, and big it just it shatters so you can see you know geologically and and, and uh, hydrologically what's going to happen here pretty clear as a bell it's going to go down and it's going to devour those under that underlying stuff down there eventually and because the new plan says we're going to run this thing till the end of may which is probably a euphemism for into june that make that just changes everything and that just makes you know, erosion, erosion is going to be a real big deal. And uh, we're not going to, you know, they're going, they're going to have to stop this thing. And then they're going to, the other, then the other kicker here is that now the Hyatt power plant, when they have to turn it off, apparently it's only going to be able to be operated at 6,000 CFS, which if that's in two weeks, you know, we ain't seen, we ain't seen the snow melt yet. That's for sure. The, the snow is sitting up there in the high country and it's still waiting. And, Thanks to um, one very diligent uh, YouTuber, uh, their video showed that actually in the last month, uh, the snowpack has actually increased in the uh, in, in most of the, the watershed. And of course, they just uh, California just passed a 100-year um, record for the wettest season ever, too. So, yeah, there's a there's a whole lot of, of ifs and and or and buts and all this stuff. And uh, the fact that they're having to <clears throat> change the plan around. To me, it is is it, it doesn't necessarily signal that things are really really bad, but it's never good when they start out with a well we're going to do this this and this and this and then they go oh wait a minute we can't do that and that because this happened and then we're going to go to this but no that happened and we can't do that either and it just feels like the situation like they are kind of running out of options they they've had to scale this thing back on flow um, and you know this thing with the this theory about the undercutting <clears throat> that I don't think initially I didn't think that that was there was enough um, you know that the that the dam the big mama dam was close enough to where all this stuff this damage and this erosion was occurring at the um, the primary spillway 
But, you know, that's predicated on them not having to run this thing very long at all. And now, I mean, if they're going to run this thing into June, then, I mean, all bets are off. You know, the erosion is just going to be that much more, even at a, at a somewhat reduced flow. Uh, so I don't know what to tell folks. I don't know what to say. I'm just a, I'm, I'm not in harm's way here. I'm, as I've said before in other videos, I'm, I'm 3,000 miles away here in, in southern New Hampshire. No, no worries for me about Oroville Dam. But I can certainly relate to people down below who were, <clears throat> who really probably still have their lives really seriously, you know, disrupted and on hold in a sense. Because uh, who knows? There could be another, get out of Dodge now. You know, it's not, I hope that they don't, that it doesn't come to that. But, you know, knowing how, knowing the way things operate, it's, it's not impossible that there's going to be an all of a sudden, you know, you got to flee again. So, and I can tell you this much, if I was a resident of Oroville, I would be, I would be like constantly in the face of the media, of my local reps, to saying, you folks, the, the authorities, whoever they are in charge of this deal now, you need to put a 24-hour surveillance cam on the front part of this thing, not just the lake. It's great. Okay, you got the lake? Fine. Wonderful. People need to see what's going on with the damaged spillway, because uh, this undercutting stuff is really, really crazy. If you if you look at um, this little set of Im images I have here, uh, you can first of all you can see the way the striations are are just continuously working down, cutting in, cutting in, cutting in continuously. And you can see this, and it's also evident on on some of those stills that I did for the the intro shots from the the DWR footage of the the opening uh, yesterday. But you can see what's happening here. You can see the action. And then you got this little beauty of a DWR helicopter, which is, <laughs> looks like a little mosquito there buzzing around, you know, these huge, uh, huge cliffs at the very bottom of the, of, the, of the diversion pool. And you look at the helicopter and you go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and you look at these cliffs and you go, man, alive. You know, we're going up today to uh, explore the ravine. Yeah. What, on foot? No, in a helicopter. In a helicopter? Yeah, a helicopter. So it's big. And the other thing I'm looking at is that specifically that little striation there where you can see it, um, you know, running down and in the way everything seems to be doing. And you look at that and you go, oh, geez, you know, it could be six inches. No, that's probably not. That thing is probably, you know, five, six feet across at where it's opening. And I don't know how it runs in. I don't know how deep that stuff goes. I don't know if there's other ones up top that go much deeper and that they're, they're eating into these veins of this inconsistent bedrock. We don't know that. So... If I was an Oroville resident, and really they owe it to, to basically everybody, because I'm a taxpayer, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna foot some of the bill for this. There's no doubt California is not gonna be able to handle this thing. They're running, what is it's already what 250, two who knows, how many hundred million it is already. So I, you know everybody here has a right to see what's going on here, and so that if there's a problem, people can can beat feet this time, or they can make their own decisions at least. Um, I mean, just that itself. I mean, if you know, if you if you so and so's out there are worried about, you know, liability, you know, that's a great way to I would think to indemnify yourself on it. You know, well, we had a video cam up. How couldn't they see anything coming down? You know, that kind of a, a mentality, which is, I know, is kind of uh, kind of harsh, but it's probably kind of true too. So, um, just keep your ears to the rails, folks. Get whatever information you can. You know, watch everybody's videos. You know, try and prove what you can on your own, and, and as always, just rely on your own eyesight. There's, they're gonna, these images that they're releasing. Everybody's images. This is all really important stuff, and it, it takes, you know, it takes people analyzing this stuff and looking at it from our, you know, from where we are to figure out what's going on. Because I just don't. We're just not gonna. I don't think anybody official is gonna do the analysis that, that YouTubers in general are doing now. So. You know, those of you out there doing the reporting on this stuff, I definitely I salute you all. Um, I think we all work on different aspects of it, and you know, keep the keep the information level going up for everybody. So, I well, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.